think they speak for everybody who's a, who's a customer of hair pieces throughout the entire history of hair pieces existing at all. When I say, why haven't you always started with blonde and dyed on top of that so the roots remain perfect? Why isn't that a system-wide solution? Why isn't that, why hasn't that always been done that way? When customers can outthink the manufacturer, there's a problem. Now, you might say, well, no, it's too hard. It's, you, can't, you can't do a thousand at a time. Really? It's not like you've invented a, a machine that just does that. Because really, what's, what's some Asian lady doing? Fucking needling thread. You've got a room full of these people working their asses off. Probably pay isn't good enough to justify the amount of arthritis and everything they would get and the cuts and everything they'd get in their fingers. Who, who knows how much COVID and blood is in these hair pieces from the manufacturing process. I mean, it seems, you know, primitive enough that we're using actual human hair rather than, you know, strands of plastic or whatever. Maybe it's more realistic to have human hair. Okay, let's assume that is uh, something we can't overcome yet. But I'm sure we can overcome stitching into plastic. So why, why are we limited to domes? Why aren't there sheets? Why aren't there gigantic rugs? <laughs> like being printed with hairs, just mass production. Think of the lack of marketing that goes into toupees. When I talk about hair pieces being 200 bucks per topper, that's the price it should really, really be. And then on television, you don't see ads for these things for sale. People could be churning them out, like mass producing them and making fucking millions of dollars from all the people with the right marketing strategy, making the taboo about wearing a hair hat go away. Instead of wearing a cap, wear a hat made out of hair, right? It's not happening after all these years and you've had a long time. Instead you get like Ashley and Martin or advanced hair, yeah, yeah, or whatever, right? Ads. And, and you look at their websites and they talk about laser shit. You know, that doesn't work, right? It's going to take a thousand years before one follicle grows back. Propecia or, or finasteride. How long is that going to take? You get six months of use before you even see if it works. And during that time, you become impotent or something. What the fuck? And all it's doing is retaining the hair you've already got. And there's Rogaine. You don't see any results for that. It's not like... You fucking put a couple of seeds in the ground and all of a sudden you've got a plantation of marijuana. This was effortless. Sprinkle a couple of seeds into some dirt and they grew. I understand we can't do that with human hair, but we can make towels with patterns. Let's see what company this is. Morgan and Finch Towel Company. How long would that take with those exact patterns for some lady in a factory to create? Do you think that because it was made out of cotton, it was a lot easier than if it was hair? Let's just say it is somewhat easier. I'd say it's not a billion times easier. Would you say it's a million times easier? I'd say probably not. I'd say maybe, let's say two times easier. Let's just say it's twice as difficult to stitch hair from a, a grouping, a bunched up grouping. Okay, let's say if I've got five inch hairs here, then the hairs are 10 inches because it's V-lipped, right? Imagine you've got an entire ponytail of 10 inch hairs, right here, waiting for the machine to go zip, 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 stitch in, in out, in out, in out, in out, 
Why are people doing this by hand? It doesn't make any sense. Why isn't this industry streamlined? Why aren't there machines working 24 hours a day to pump out these things for all the bored people in the world? It's, 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 it's round. It's fucking weird. It, it freaks me out a bit. This industry is wide open for anybody who wants to make some money. So I don't understand why it's all still being done by hand, extremely slowly, to the extent that people can't work during a pandemic. Towels haven't stopped being manufactured. Think about the difficulty in making this hat. You think it's complex? I reckon they churn out about a billion of these fucking things a week worldwide. That's more advanced than a hairpiece. And I'll, t I'll bet you it was made in China. Maybe I've ripped all the tags off it. But let's just assume it was made in China. So the Chinese do have stitching machines. They can run these parallel and this one sideways and this one thicker and put a little divot there. It doesn't come out. <clears throat> it makes me wonder, doesn't it make you wonder why stitching of these things is so hard? They've had enough years now. And, and, and the other thing is partials. Why aren't partials being mass produced? I don't understand why people think Oh yeah, we have a lot of bald people in our country. We don't have many balding people though. What, how can you think that? Everybody who becomes bald is balding on the way through. So that, that's got to constitute 90% of the people who'd want these hair pieces. So therefore they'd want partials, not full toppers. So why isn't that representing 90% of the sales of the industry? And then bringing back to the blonde roots. If roots are visible, if, whether it's knots in lace or V-loop cornfield lines in poly, it looks like shit. Why would you make it like that? The second hairpiece you ever manufacture, you make the first one go, oh, no, that doesn't look any good. It looks like doll's hair. Let's not ever do that again. But sire, all the other companies are doing it this way. All right, let's 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 just continue cutting corners and, and, and fucking, the, the customers are paying for it anyway, so what's the problem? Okay. Imagine you've got a dunking machine. Dunk, it absorbs up to that line. Blonde hair pieces, boom. Just leave it there hanging and just keep that fucking production line rolling through a blonde into whatever color this batch of a thousand hair pieces is, medium dark brown let's say, keep it going in the drying racks over there, air blasting, whatever the fuck needs to happen so that it's packed, plastic wrapped and just put into thin, easy to ship envelopes. Without having this in a big box that says, this guy wears a hair piece on the front of the box. It's fucking standing in a fucking vacuum sealed in. Just fucking send it. It's, it's fucking... I can't do it. I'm, I don't run a factory, but I know that factories exist. Alright? I know that glass is made out of sand and it's still delivered at this exact size for my apartment. And for millions of other apartments. <sighs> Mass production is not something new. Look at this fucking clock. Look at the phone that I'm filming with right now. This is hair yeah, printing. It's fucking easy. What are you doing? Tumble dryer. Look at this fucking thing. It's got electronics and shit built in it. A hairpiece does nothing. It just sits there. It's fucking nothing. And glue. What the fuck are you people doing? You're just staying on the same formula? Are you doing more testing? Don't do animal testing. I'll come and fucking hunt you down and kill you. Right? And your entire family. Do not test on animals. But fucking glue should work. Or have some sort of primer that just blocks the pores from leaking out whatever. It probably already exists in medicine. Find it, market it for the hair people. We'll probably pay you an extra 10 bucks on the going rate just because you put a different sign on it. We didn't know where to source it from in medical 
industry shit, so we're just gonna give it to you. Make some money. Money. Isn't that incentive, and isn't that why you're in this business in the first place? Money. We will give you our money. We're begging you, please take our money. All we want from you is fucking products that work. Is that too much to ask? And why are you making one at a time? One bad product at a time, followed by another bad product at a time. This one has the hair shedding out. Oh, it doesn't matter, sell it anyway. Don't give a fuck, counting the cash. Your cash is going to stop being counted the moment that person goes to a different company because you fucking suck. You have a history of bad one-star reviews all over the internet. People talking on forums. We all talk to each other. The hair wearing community all talk to each other. You've got a bad reputation. You lose not just the sale of the one person who you fucking ripped off. You lose their sale plus probably 50% of anyone they ever talk to again about it because everyone's gonna go yeah but i heard somebody else say i was okay whereas this person saying it's really shit their their opinion is gonna weigh heavily on you all right it will matter where are your machine where's your machinery do i just need to come up with 10 million dollars from an investor and introduce them to a person who makes machines that stitch things and say, listen, this person provides hair, this person can make poly sheeting and form it, can form it to any shape or size I want. And this person has a stitching machine. Can we just have all of you guys come together into this one building, assign this project manager from China and just oversee production of 10,000 units a day? What color do you want them? All blonde. All, all the hairs from India, yeah. Blonde. Try and find out the way to keep it as robust as possible while making it as blonde as possible. Want it all blonde. Why do you want it blonde? Because that's the best way we've thought of to keep the roots nice. We've got an idea to make the roots blonde while keeping the rest of the hair dark brown. Do that then. Is it going to be mass producible? Is it going to take the same amount of time? Same price, cheaper. Do that then. It's better and cheaper. What options are you thinking about hair companies? What are you doing? Are you fucking just jacking off in your own feces in the corner of your fucking warehouse? Like thinking, yeah, yeah, I've got $300 this month. Make 300 million this month. We wanna give you our money. So don't suck, and we will. Thank you. Good news, everybody. I just woke up. It's uh, five minutes to 11 p.m. Happy to see that the label's not on this. Always take your labels off the uh, walker tape ultra hold so you can see what's going on in there. You've got to clean it with C22. But listen to this. Recently, I bought this die and this developer to mix together to dye the grays off my hair, but more importantly. Do, 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 to dye a blonde hair piece. And keep the roots invisible. This will be my first ever attempt to do this. I would say this looks like medium light density i gotta tell you something this looks exactly as i hoped just from the outside i was worried that they might have started with you know indian colored hair which is dark brown stitch it through then make it blonde so that the roots are still fucked up but it looks like they have in fact done it the good way around which is bleach it all blonde first and then, yeah, look at that. That's 
that's quality. That's quality. That's uh. It's a pity about that. So this is color number 22, okay? Color number 22, it's blonde, it's yellow. Color number 60 something is more whitish than this. But I figured when I do bleach the roots, the dyed, so yeah, when I bleach these roots, the bleach sort of blends in, but when I dye this, I think it'll blend down into the blonde. So not sure if blonde is a bad choice compared to the more invisible color of color 60, whatever it is. This is color 22, like I say, all right. Um, I can't remember if this is 0 0.06 or 0 0.03 millimeter. I think that's actually folded. Seems like 0 0.03, I can't tell. I think it is. I... <laughs> How do I not know what I ordered? I just, because I looked at hundreds of suppliers, okay? These guys won my first bit of business. The other thing about this viewpoint, and also I'm wearing glasses, <coughs> is you can see the stitching directions more clearly here. So, Right here, there's a circle where the crown has changed direction, I think. So it looks like this company have stitched all, obviously, forwards towards the front and straight lines. Then they've done the circle bit, and then at the back, they've gone off starburst in all correct directions. That example I always had looking at the back of the Lord hair samples, saying that the back of their hair pieces were just nonsense in all directions. That doesn't seem typical. I was just always buying them. Um, but yeah, it seems like this company, at least at the very front edge, they'll all be going back. So at that point there, it should look okay. Except for that. Auschwitz tag. I, uh, it looks so easy to peel off, doesn't it? It looks like you just grab it with your fingernail and just pull it off, but they use super glue. So I don't want to rip a hole in it. All right, so um, I'm gonna cut this into my constituent rug sizes. I was actually thinking about you know, my hairpiece is a an eye shape like that, right? Symmetrical, like that. Um, but up here, this hair still grows a bit, so I could potentially just cut straight across there, so it would be more like that, and then shove. And then that means that I could potentially cut three hair pieces out of a hairpiece again, like I used to. Probably not though. And also the central piece has all those different direction <laughs> heads. So you can do it with lace because lace doesn't really have that, you know, bound into particular directions problem. So what I used to do is go shape like that. One, two, three. So I could fit three into a lace hair piece. So that works pretty well. That's just a tip. If you if you if you want to have more partials, lace usually has a little bit more material, and also there's no multi-directional V-loop stitching that's forcing hairs to stay in certain directions. Lace is a bit more forgiving in that way. Though you can get pieces that you can't brush it and stop it from going like that the whole time you're wearing it or something, you know. Um, so. I have a salad bowl. I was going to wait for my other stuff. Anyway, I'll start by just cutting this out. Okay, 
Okay, so this is a blonde 0 0.03 millimeter hairpiece. As you can see through the roots look perfect, right? You can't tell that that isn't growing out of my fingers or whatever. It seems like a new problem now. Maybe the plastic line will become an issue because with the roots so perfect, now the poly stands out, doesn't it? I'm going to start by cutting a sample. So I can run a few more experiments after this as well, okay? So this is my sample. Now in terms of measuring this stuff, I don't want to wake up the neighbors, that's a bit loud, isn't it? That is a stir up. I might just use my fingers as well here instead of that spoon because it don't make so much noise with the clanging. Alright, so let's just have a look at this stuff first. This is 10 volt or 3%. I can't smell it, but I don't want to put my nose directly over there. Okay, so. I'm going to start by putting this one in the bowl first. I will be eating salad and stuff out of this bowl, so you know, it's not, I'll wash it. Hopefully it won't kill me. Okay, so this is Matrix So Color. Dark Brown Mocha 4M. So with these things, black is 1 and 10 is the lightest one. Piercing over here. Oh, I thought it would be darker than that. Right, so I'm just going to squeeze some of this in here. Now it's got a real pearl. Fix it to it. I just want to clean that off because it's poison. stuff into this mix, I don't know if it's going to happen like this. No. Now, I'm going to try to match that quantity with one to one, okay? Oh, it's like cum. I thought it would be more liquidy than that, more watery. Does that seem like one to one to you? Just to clean off that poison as well. To mix this, all I'm going to do is just it smells nice, sweet. Now the development time, as far as I can understand, is 30 minutes. It's a bit annoying that this is not. <laughs> but it, it's probably good because then I can see it actually working. Alright, so that's about one to one ratio as far as I can tell. It's like icing. Okay, let me grab my sample. Chuck it in. Just it in here. Get the base nice and covered as well. I want, I want to see if I can do this as simply as possible, okay? I really want to see results that are amazing. <laughs> and that the base can just be washed easily. In 
Okay. Now, maybe I'll just let you watch that. Let me just fill up my hard drive with the footage. Oh, you see if this whole thing just changes colour over time. Okay. Let's see if any of that actually changes colour. Hopefully that gives you some good visibility. I'll just rub some of that on this white paper. I don't know if this uh, light battery will last for 30 minutes. Okay, so at first glance, it appears as though the base material has turned purple. And the hairs themselves seem purple in light of the color of that, but yeah, they could be purple. <laughs> it's uh, it washing with some hot water as well. So the results of this first experiment have been disappointing. The base is discolored. <clears throat> and, well, I don't know, maybe the roots are still kind of Would you say those roots are invisible if we made sure the base wasn't? Here's the question. If I dye it, just on the hair alone, without touching the roots. The interesting is, you see, there, where the hair goes in underneath, that's kind of like the roots, isn't it? It's interesting to consider that that could look very good if it wasn't colored so badly. If there was a different one to, three, one to one ratio, one to three ratio with the developer, no developer at all. I'd say this base material is permanently stained though. So common sense tells me I need to brush the colour through the hair. Without the purple base, that does seem like it's brown, doesn't it? Don't know if it's my type of brown, it's probably too dark. 
wonder if I could shave a That's not purple, is it? That's just brown. Just the base that's purple. Okay. So unfortunately means I've got to do this the, the hard way. So this will be experiment number two. And in this experiment, I will simply brush the color onto the hairs. To avoid making the base messy. Yeah, this is gonna be hard. <laughs> it's gonna be hard to avoid the base. Okay, so this was the first one where I just dumped the whole lot and you can see that the base material has just gone purple. I did, I did wash up with shampoo and conditioner. Also, you can see the cornfield lines because those straight lines are just really... doesn't matter if the knots, the roots were absolutely bleached because you can still, you can see where it's stitched through like a piercing but it's not enough to stop those straight lines from doing what they do. Now this is the second one I just did now, the blonde roots. There are parts of the base that have been compromised, but you can see there where the blonde roots go into brown. Let me concentrate on this area for a second. probably too long and then back here we've got too much dunking going on okay so I've done two experiments now on the one hand we've got the dyed base completely dunked in and that's turned purple so I'm pretty confident that no amount of cleaning or washing is going to stop that from being that color, it's probably penetrated right into the molecules and it's irredeemable without changing the color of the hairs themselves. Anyway, at any rate, if I did dunk that whole thing into peroxide, it would be no different from taking an existing hairpiece and dunking that with its base in peroxide. So that's no better than getting a hairpiece from a factory and starting from that. What I want is something with really, really perfect knots, perfect roots. This is the second test I did. You can see where it's been stained in these places. It just, it was a too clumsy method to try and manually do that with my finger. Even doing it with a brush could possibly result in that kind of thing. On the front side, we can see that where it is not to bleach, we're getting pretty much perfect roots, but in some instances they're a bit too long. I need a more uniform way of painting this all without getting any dye on the base. Now I've thought maybe I get some tape, stick it on there, stick it on a flat surface, hold the hairs up, dunk that all in some kind of 
Vaseline or something and make sure it doesn't absorb any dye somehow. And then just run my fingers through like that potentially and, and dye it like that. It's one way to do it. If it could be stuck to something, I could just do that with the bleach, with the, with the dye all through my fingertips. But there's one more idea that I've got. Something that would be user friendly to everybody, not just for people like me with a flat partial, but also for people who have domes. We need something that's readily available, something easy to use. And so I'm thinking we could use this because I'm sick of this fucking whole process and I just want to fucking finish now. Just... <laughs> no. This, we can use this, okay. Now if I cut some, if I cut some lines, then I could potentially put a base underneath it, pull the hairs through and just flat and, and dye them like that. So I'll start with one single straight line. Now I'll do a second one beside it. Let's go test this out. This is test number three. I'm gonna pull the hairs through. You know what, this is a bit difficult, so I'm gonna wet this first, okay? This obviously hasn't come through as nicely as I wanted it to, but given that I'm impatient and I can't be bothered correcting this problem, I'm just going to go ahead and test it because potentially the dye will absorb downwards into the hairs enough. So long as I've got most of the hairs through, there'll be some blonde hairs, but. Okay, so looking at options as opposed to that, there are other things that have holes in it already that potentially could allow me to pull the hairs through. That's too hard, no good. That might work, but I feel it's too spaced apart potentially. And it only works for a very small piece. That seems very awkward. That's a bit hard to pull the hairs through, I suppose. Same again, and too far apart. That's not... The holes aren't all over. They're not close enough together. <coughs> this one looks like it's got potential. Fan cover. 
the heater cover, that kind of thing's where they pull it through. I'm assuming the dye would <coughs> absorb up into the roots enough. Maybe not in this case because it's too thick. I've got another little one up there. <coughs> but I think ideally what I need is some sort of comb, a wide comb, something wide enough, as wide as the hairpiece. Mm. I have to think about this. Otherwise, <coughs> I could try to cut those lines longer. It would make it less difficult. Um, to pull the hairs through if they were really long and potentially I need to make them closer together next time. Okay, let's take a look at this. Well, it looks very clean and yellow, doesn't it? They are perfectly bleached roots, so let's just see if we can streamline this entire process. Alright, even at a glance, <coughs> you can see there's a problem. Okay, so that was experiment one. I just dumped the whole lot in. Experiment two, I just tried to <coughs> aim manually with my hand. Still got some splotches everywhere. And three, this was pulling it through these cuts. But I didn't bring enough through. So the roots are too big. And I also got some on that corner. So, we need to streamline this process. So we can't dunk it, we can't get any bleach on the base. We do need to independently bleach the hairs and not the base, but we need to get really close up. But we don't want it to be so close that we get cornfield lines. We need to... Leave the roots about one millimeter long. Let's see if we can examine whether or not it it it, it, it sort of sponges in. I think it does. I think it's not a straight line. I think it blends from brown to blonde. So even if we did have an exact one millimeter line we could potentially get some nice transition. Now we looked at some kitchen utensils to try to get these hairs to flow through nicely. But I said what we need probably is some sort of big comb thing so the hairs can go through entirely and come in from the outside. There's no difficulty in putting them through and then the hairs will just come up through the comb, right? and the, the teeth of the comb stop the base from coming through. But you could make sure it's perfectly spaced. For a sample, it might be big enough, this particular comb, but for a standard hairpiece, you'd need something a lot bigger. And it doesn't really address the curvature issue Or is this kind of does? This is a very clumsy piece of technology. These lines are not close enough together. And these lines are not long enough to make it easier enough to put the hairs through.
Listen, if I give instructions for people playing with knives in this thing, it just wants to fucking slip, right? It's Somebody's going to cut themselves very badly. <clears throat> I don't think it's responsible for enough for me to give you these instructions. Um, and they're not close enough together, really. It's a far cry from a comb solution. And what I need is a long, a long comb. Quite long. And if it was flexible enough, it could bend around with a curved hairpiece as well. So we need to find something like that. So I was looking <coughs> through the internet to see what kind of long toothed combs exist. This one seemed promising with as many teeth sticking out as you want. So, you know, and then I thought maybe like a basket for plants or something. Then I thought drying rack, that might be good. Obviously, you still have to pull the hairs through. If I flip this thing upside down, look at the hairs coming through. Okay, let's start by wetting this. Okay, so <clears throat> I managed to reach under here and pull the hairs through. The most important part was that <clears throat> I needed the outer edge hairs to go right to the very outer limits. Well, that was extremely awkward. I need five hands to do this, and that's not even including the fucking tripod shit and all the other things that are fucking falling all over the place around here. And I need the neighbors to fucking leave a 1,000 kilometer radius for me to get my work done without having to worry about fucking making noise because humanity all does exactly the same shit as each other every day. Now I've got some on the base. I couldn't avoid it. There's nothing I could have done. I clamped it down with one hand, I reached under here with the other, but as you can see, this whole thing's very fucking awkward. I'm trying to film at the same time here for you, Fox. All right. Somebody think of a better way, please, for God's sake. Think of a better way than this. Okay guys, I need your help. Attempt one, destructive bleaching of the base itself, unacceptable. Number two, trying to brush it in from on top. I missed a bit, but it was closer than these other two that are coming up. But still, I bleached some of the base. It didn't bleach enough. <clears throat> this one was uh, through here. Very difficult and awkward and didn't really work. Didn't get low enough down. <clears throat> and this one through the dish drying rack still I didn't quite get in I went from underneath with my fingers and grabbed it and did that uh, didn't quite make it and on the corner I got some bleach sorry some dye look if I'm saying the word dye or bleach I'm just fucking pissed off at this entire operation right you fucking do it can you just tell me one thing look we're very close at this point okay this is obviously not good enough. This is not good enough. A comb. I'm gonna comb the fucking. A comb that's longer than this. Look, the comb needs to stick out at least this far, okay? I don't know if you need something for horses or a drying rack, but what you wanna do is you wanna slide the hairpiece onto the existing teeth. You don't want this end to be sealed. That's why this failed. It's also too far apart. You need them very close together. Not this close together, but this close together. Okay, that'd be good. Find out what it is. Send me the actual link. Don't choose something that costs $100 for a fucking rack, all right? Now, some ideas that come to mind. Guitar strings, all right? If they were lined up nicely, 
but it's too awkward to try to drop the hairs down through. Even if you're wet, you're pulling it through and then it bunches up. You saw, I don't want to have to describe in words what you saw with your fucking eyeballs, all right? <sighs> Look, teeth are the way to go. Parallel teeth, whether it goes curved or it's fucking some sort of net or it's some sort of cage. Look, think of metal or plastic prongs, prongs of any kind, some kitchen thing that's long that does that, but they're all parallel, but they can't flop too much. If they flop too much, if they, if they flop at all, they'll probably be changing distances and it'll be messy. It needs to be firm so it's robust and it doesn't frustrate the fuck out of you. You need to be able to access it from underneath and do that method or just paste on with a brush in such a way that it doesn't leak through the gaps. Do you understand what I'm saying? These teeth cannot be too thick, otherwise you'll get a very big root system. You need them to be close, low down, right? Like some of those are. Please just do that for me, I'm, I'm, I'm tired, okay? All I'm asking you to do is come up with some system, right? I don't know what it's gonna be. Think about it, whatever the fuck you can find, all right? In some sort of system similar to that long, right? Don't come up with an idea that I've already shown you it doesn't work. Don't, sh don't give me an idea that costs a lot of money. Don't talk about building something unless it's fucking easy, right? There should be a product on the market that's used for fucking sieving flour or fucking trimming pubes or, or perming hair or fucking, I don't know, like cleaning engines, I don't know. Fucking think about the interior component of a fucking washing machine, I don't know. Search your brain, whatever you can think of. It's gotta be useful. Don't be a fucking moron. All you have to do is do this end bit for me and I'll fucking, I'll do it, I'll buy it or I'll find it in my house or in my backyard or on the rooftop or in the fucking insulation or wherever the fuck you're suggesting I find it. Okay, just think. For me, all right? I've done enough thinking. There are hundreds of you. Among you, there has to be one person who's got a good idea about how to do this. All right? Now, I think you can agree that it's brown, the, the, the developer and everything worked well. I don't know if that matches my color, if it's a bit too purple or if it might fade over time or whatever else. That doesn't seem like a relevant problem at the moment, does it? We've got the we've got the dyeing happening, okay? We found dye. It makes things blonde to brown. Didn't, didn't go the problem. Colour matching might be a problem in the future. That's not the issue. The issue is how do we keep the roots of a blonde hair base blonde? Okay, we want to make them invisible. We're at the very final stretch. Not that it's taken a long time, it's taken from the time I woke up at I don't know, what was it? 10 30 pm until 5 a.m to 90% solve the problem of toupees having visible knots. Just find me the final 1% of the problem, solve, solve that for me. Your name will go down in history, all right? As the person who thought of the fucking way to hang these things, okay? Even if it's just for me, even if it's just for partials, okay? We can deal with the curvature later on, all right? All I need from you a better solution than this. Check out the price of this flow bee. $597.23. That can get it fucked. I also looked at the robo cut. So that was a bunch of shit. So I end up going with this instead. I'm gonna make some things. I don't think this will be strong enough to create a comb system for what we're just discussing but in the future it might work. It's daytime now so we can see they're still damp but we can compare the results. That was the first one that failed because you can't dye the base. This one I kind of just painted it on with my fingers and while I avoided some of the base, that still doesn't look right. The, the, the roots are too long there. And in other places, I accidentally <coughs> dyed the base. 
So whatever system we come up with has to be really flawless. That's probably the best example of where hairs look like they're naturally. Let's see if we can get a good shot. If we could naturally get the roots remaining blonde, very short distance, and then the color begins. Over here, we're starting to get those cornfield lines, unfortunately, too close to the roots. There really isn't much margin for error. Over here, there's a huge error, right? Just, I can't remember what system that one was. I think I tried to, I think this was the slats. That's slats there. I think there was that one. You can get it all through. So there's really nothing in there that's any good. And this one, I think, came through the, uh, the dish drying rack. So, let's see if we can find a sample that's decent. Okay, so if we do get it right, it'll look like the hairs are coming out of the scalp. I've got a new one of these coming. This one's fucked, the Born. It's got an internal battery problem. It's really loud, really narrow head, and these bits just pop up all the time. I'm still stuck with this very, very short <coughs> uh, bench top, so that's fucked me up. Still doing the dishes in here because I'm under renovations. But, um, yeah. You think companies, this is, here's a question for you. Do you think that companies don't start with a yellow or a blonde hairpiece and then dye it because they haven't figured out how to do this and have tried it and it always ends up with mixed results like these? Now, I haven't really done anything very formal in these experiments, I've simply tried to do it with very basic handheld equipment. There's no machinery or anything that I've set up properly. Um, now, some people might say, forget about setting it up or hanging each piece on a rack. Just put it on your head and then put dye through all of your hair and put it on, do it on your head one at a time. No, I'm not going to be doing anything one at a time. That's for fucking damn sure, right? Secondly, um, what would prevent me from accidentally getting dye onto the fucking base when it's on my head? And then I'm wearing it and I went to the trouble of putting it on and then it's fucked. Potentially, the end result of all this, potentially the end result of all of this is that the best solution possible is to just buy a 0.03 millimeter poly hair piece in your color that you've already got and then try to bleach the knots after the way I'm doing it now, just along the front hairline. That would be a bit of a nightmare uh, <clears throat> problem, given that we've always acknowledged, why are we, I've always acknowledged that it's shit. You can always buy lace if you don't care about glue shining through in bright sunshine. Like uh, the sun's directly on me now. If this was lace, you'd see the shine of the glue coming through all of that. And then it would melt and it'd go through the hair and make this hair stick together in summer. It's winter here now. It's only 20 degrees in this heated room. Outside it's about 10 degrees, which is 50 degrees Fahrenheit for people who don't speak English properly. Um, but the blonding, the blonde hair pieces and then dyeing them is hard. It's stupidly hard. What wouldn't be hard is probably lace. Because then you, there's no risk of, well, there is a risk of that happening because you have the lace base, which is a grid shape and you don't want that to turn purple, do you? So, what are your thoughts on this? And uh, what are your thoughts on hair clamps or some kind of uh, comb thing that can go in and hold these things so they hang nicely so that you can do this and try not to get your fingers through the gaps? Like I said, I think a comb space like that would work best. You just go straight up to a hairpiece, slot it in like that, and then 
you, you, you're, you're pulling on the hairs from underneath like that. I can't show you properly with fucking one hand, all right? You've seen that the video, all right? If you haven't, rewind back. Don't just skip to the end of the video like a cunt, all right? Watch it. I've got a lot of trouble here. Um, trying to make sure these problems permanently go away. I'm trying to convert that into that, but without the shitty roots. So, if it works, the industry will be changed forever. Don't you understand? It'll be changed forever. Nobody will have to deal with shitty roots ever again. So let's fix it together. Can we do that? Please try to think of a way to clamp it easily, not hard, and not on the head. Not on the head. That's wrong. That's not even on the cards, okay? We're not doing it on the fucking head. One hair piece at a time. Imagine we want to do a thousand of them and sell them. That's the question. How do we do that? Okay? Now, if it's partials, we can do something flat. If it's a dome, potentially, I need to start 3D printing samples of a dome shape, similar to this, and then figure out a way to put something that goes over the top of it, through the hairs somehow, and just locks in. Or some sort of comb that goes through like that, through the hairs. And then it can be hung upside down and they're just brushing thousands of them with dye. In such a way that the bristles of a brush or, or a sponge or something cannot penetrate up through gaps yeah, similar to that. Okay. Now, the only way that the colour would go up through that at all would be because it's seeping up slightly. You don't want direct sharp lines where blonde stops and brown begins. But you can see there are some graduating colour um, blending going on. If you look closely enough, you can see parts that are, look promising. You know what I mean? It looks promising. Okay, let's not give up. Thank you. Let's, if I can find a solution. Write some good comments on this one. This is, if, if comments have ever mattered in a video, they matter in this video the most so far in all the videos I've ever made. Thanks.